Okay, we're continuing to use Rui because uh, there are diggers hanging around and that is just not acceptable. Oh, what's this? Quick time? I know I keep saying it, but quick time? Oh, it's Osmond. Hey, little buddy. Poke. Huh? What happened? Hi, Ozzy. <laughs> oh, that's right. During the test flight, the body fell apart. Darn, I wonder what went wrong. In theory, it was supposed to be perfect. And I thought I saw a part turn into a weird ball. Maybe it's just my imagination. Oh, and who are you? Well, anyways, let's go back. Oh! Did I have a, a helipack? Please? Are you a camp jetpack or camp helipack in, uh, in, uh, Ratchet and Clank? I always use the helipack, man. It's very cool. <laughs> go, go, gadget backpack. Uh, okay, I think, uh, oh yeah, they took me back. Perfect. Perfect. This seems like from Blue Terra. Why here? Speaks. Uh, genie? Oh, that. I saw it with a big telescope. That's not much evil. The Blue Terra folk need help if they are troubled by so little evil. Distress. Gestures. What? Seal it? You must be kidding. Sealing? That's like extinct. Yikes! No one in Yellow Drop knows how to seal, probably. Isn't that when you put something into an urn or something, right? That is impossible. Dramatic sigh. Wait up. I haven't said no yet. I said that sealing di technique was difficult. I don't know why I can't read right now. There's a cooler way than sealing. Just knock it down. Don't worry, I will take care of it. Count on me. Here's the plan. I'm in the process of making a so-called sun giant. Watch out! Neat. It is the state-of-the-art yellow drop technology. Let's say it's like a super-sized golem to make a long story short. The sun giant could easily knock out the genie. But then this very sun giant ran away and broke into pieces during the test drive. The magical gem we have now is not powerful enough to support the sun giant. We need a Pez Sphere to make the sun giant perfect. A Pez Sphere is one of the most powerful of the magical gems. If we use that, the sun giant will operate at its best. It has been put up as a prize for a match at the Coliseum. If you could win the match, you could acquire it. Easy to say, but winning a contest, it takes hard work. That means let's join forces. Oh, yeah. I gotta, I gotta fix your name. You're no longer Osmond. You are now Ozzy. Ozzy. Heck yeah. <laughs> I always call him Ozzy. Cause it's metal! Whoa! What a nerd. <laughs> Best bunny. Okay, uh, back to Moonsea? Question mark, I guess? Okay, we should see our first little thing uh, where uh, we need Ozzy to get through. Oh, uh, can Ozzy jump? Oh, yeah, look at that. Oh, I can literally just fly over it. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. Okay, <laughs> I think that's one of the reasons why I actually liked Ozzy. Um, was because he's the only other character that can get over those stupid holes. But back to, uh, Ruby, because I'm just not really ready to, to, uh, start a new character. <laughs> 
So yeah, last time I was rambling about something pretty uh, serious and, well, serious to me anyway, because it always kind of bothered me. Video games are art. <laughs> Period, end of sentence. What are you talking about? You're not talking about anything seriously and you're speaking subjectively. Because you have a bug up your butt for some reason about, I don't know, programming is too hard for you, so you consider anything to do with programming not art, and that makes no sense. Just disregard all the artists because one thing's in it that you don't enjoy, or because you don't enjoy, I don't know, fun things like games. <laughs> Therefore, it's not art in your opinion. Okay, but anyway, <laughs> we're not having that conversation again. I, I'm a little triggered by that conversation. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just want to talk about uh, like um, like mental health. Like, what do you do to like take care of yourself when it's time to take care of yourself? Like when you're having a mental health moment, you know. And uh, these are things I never really like thought about ever. Like, I literally I was one of those people who thought that they were never uh, not okay. <laughs> Which, as we know, anyone who thinks that they're never not okay are usually the people who are the absolute worst and need to be punted to therapy at the speed of light and removed from the general population because they are really not doing well. <laughs> so, yeah. So if that's you and you're like, I never have any problems. I'm fine. I'm getting through things. I'm, you know, the boss of myself, blah, blah, blah. Everything is fine because I'm me. I I suggest you uh, you take some time out and talk to people and uh, see if actually you've been driving yourself completely insane and you're not okay and you need a time out. <laughs> time out in the good time out, not like time out this and put your put your nose in the corner because uh, we don't have teaching methods to <laughs> help you, so we will punish you. No, I mean time out is in. Um, Time down, downtime, downtime. That's probably more better English wording. <laughs> um, yeah, like, um, I do you know when you're having like a mental health crisis? Are you able to identify that in yourself, or or are you like I was saying, and and you're probably always in a mental health crisis, but you haven't like identified it yet. So you're just kind of still running at full full pelt. Well, you need to just take some time down. Some downtime. One of these days I'll say it correctly. Um, or are you somebody who just... When, it, when you reach max capacity, you're like, Nope. Nope. And then you just kind of like melt down or something, you know? Like, whoa. How, how is it for you? <clears throat> um, like I was saying, forever for me, I was that that really toxic person who just um, never had a problem. Everything else is the problem. Destruction ring. That's a good item. I've already maxed her out. That's actually one of the like a, a ring just below the one I've got. So that, w that would have been good. <laughs> actually, do I have that written down somewhere? I've got a list somewhere of rings to look for that uh, and, and weapons to look for rather that um, have special effects. Let me look at that one real quick. That might have been one of the ones... Nope, if it was one of the ones, that one does not have anything on it this time. A special effects I'm looking for to uh, to still make these weapons better. I want to put every good effect on, on the weapons before I call it done. Um, but that will probably happen when we're doing Demon Shaft, which will be after I beat the game and I restart Eternal Ring. Uh, but yeah, like, knowing like your own triggers is really important and I know that's kind of like a word that a lot of people who think they don't have problems but actually do um, get upset with and think well everybody else has triggers I don't have any triggers uh, I hate to break it to you but you probably just got triggered right then by the word triggered because you're so unaware of your own situation your own selfhood um, that you just run around with your forehead forward <laughs> and uh, collide into social situations and never take a step back and uh, actually take care of yourself and your own well-being. And, uh, you know, if anybody's hearing this that is like this, obviously this is probably not going to fix you. And uh, I don't expect it to. But this is more for people who, ha who uh, have had to deal with uh, people like the person that I was and, like, you know, people that we all know. 
who just will not take the time out to slow down and question themselves and considering what consider what they're doing isn't working for even a second. Um, and there's something to be said for um, like sunken cost fallacy. Like if you think, oh, this way that I am, I've been this way for so long. This is just the way that I am. Um, nobody's actually carved in stone, but we're kind of like led to believe that we are. Like you have to pick all these things about your identity and you're expected to just stick with it rather than, you know, realizing that people are fluid and are not actually rigid monoliths of <laughs> concepts. I'm gonna go to the next level, one sec. <sighs> I'm getting a little sidetracked. I have like another conversation I wanna have about like individualism and the delusion of identity, especially from like a Western perspective. Um, but yeah, I'm just talking about like a mental health. Like, what are you doing to take care of yourself? And are you actually able to identify when you need to take care of yourself? Um, and I'm somebody who gets burnout, like, really badly. And, uh, the way that I identify burnout for myself is that, like, I feel like there's a pressure, a resistance going on inside of me whenever I'm like, okay, I have to do this thing. And I feel like, almost like, you know, like when you hold, uh, two magnets the wrong way around and so they push, again, push away from each other with, like, an, an invisible field? And it doesn't really make sense, it seems like you should just be able to push them together, but then there's just this, like, resistance. I, like, feel like that internally when I realize- when I'm realizing I'm- I'm burnt out. There'll be, like, like a wave of pain in my head, almost like a headache. When I'm like, oh, I have to do this thing, and I'll just get, like, this wave of this sensation, like, pain. But it's more like an emotion. It's really hard to explain. <laughs> And then I'll feel like this resistance, you know? Whereas normally I'm just like, this, this needs to be done, okay, check, I've done it. And I feel very good about like accomplishing things, you know? I'm very a uh, uh, checklist accomplishment oriented person. Um, but when I'm burnt out, it's, it's really, really hard to, uh, to even function because I just have like this resistance that is like painful in the way of me getting up and just doing the thing that I know that I might actually even enjoy doing. So, yeah, it sucks. But, uh, yeah, burnout is, like, real. Those things are really weird looking. <laughs> it's, uh, it sucks, and it's really real, and burnout is really real. And hopefully there's not really anybody arguing that burnout isn't real, because it is. Uh, we are not machines. We cannot go for all of eternity, and even machines can't, because they will cease to function. It will break down. But uh, for some reason in society, we're expected to do the same thing over and over. And not break down. And uh, if you live in America, then you're certainly not ex allowed to, I don't know, have a day off or something. Because, heaven forbid, you actually need to relax and not be burned out. And yeah, it's just all very toxic on this day. And uh, we're treated like our our mental health is the burden rather than things are a burden on our mental health. You know what I mean? It's very strange. So that's how I identify when I uh, I'm having a mental health issue. Is I just this sensation that's uh, almost pain-like and this like pushback in my mind and in my body to actually do something. Um, another way I identify when I'm burnt out is um, I will uh, I want to doom scroll more. You know what I mean? So like a, that's another topic I want to go over but um, basically doom scrolling is when you're you're looking at your phone and like you just keep looking at your phone and you just like are going through like your Facebook feed or your Instagram feed and you're just infinitely scrolling down, even though, like, you're not really getting anything, you're not really looking for anything, content's just popping up and you're just consuming it. Maybe you're not even particularly paying attention to it, it's just kind of, like, going by. And that's doom scrolling. So when I'm really kind of burned out, I feel like I will open my Instagram app and I will actually start scrolling through, which can be okay because I do, like, there's cool people on there and I want to interact with their content. 
Um, but I'm, I'm normally the kind of person who wants to be, like, doing something. <laughs> so I feel bad, but at the same time, I just have this resistance to do anything. Which I guess is like transition into a new task, you know? So, um, yeah, so I'll, I'll notice I'll start to doom scroll more, or I'll do a lot of sitting and, and staring, and just not able to get on with the next task, even though I know I have to do it, and there's like no getting around it. And yeah, and that's, that's when I will kind of know. It's not even like... I won't even necessarily have like an outburst like I'll start you know be upset or be crying or be crying about anything in particular it's just like um <laughs> there's a like a mental health um term um called like spoons I don't know if you've ever heard of that um but you think of like spoons in like uh in like a drawer and you only have so many spoons in your drawer um, unless you're like a spoon collector, you have a highly limited number of spoons. Um, and maybe like a well put together house will have enough spoons at any given time. They will have planned ahead and, and they'll have more spoons than they really ever kind of use up. And you can think of that as somebody who's got their sort of mental health together or who is like neurotypical. Um, whatever tasks need doing, they've got enough energy to go around and get it all done. And, uh, and so they have enough spoons to use up during a day. Um, so when you do a task, you like take a spoon and you set it aside. It's like, that's one spoon gone out of my spoon drawer. That's one dirty spoon. You put it in the, in the sink, so to speak. Um, so yeah, somebody who has, like, their house put together, that this is, like, a neurotypical person, um, their house being, like, their mental health state, They've, they've just got enough spoons, and it's not really ever a concern to them. <laughs> you know, they very rarely are gonna uh, burn out in the same way as somebody who's, like, neurodivergent, who maybe has, like, three spoons, and that's not enough <laughs> for even getting through the day. Um, so you have to, you know, as a neurodivergent person, decide where to place your spoons in a day. And, uh, yeah, so... Um, I, I forget exactly where I was going with that, but that's a, that's a good way to kind of like measure your mental health. It's like, do, do I have the spoons for this? <laughs> for this? And uh, shoot, this episode is going really long, so I'm going to keep talking about it because I actually really like this topic. It's kind of a special interest is mental health. And yeah, so I'm going to tell a story about a, a mental health situation I had and kind of how I dealt with it and kind of give some suggestions. And yeah, anyway, so hopefully you're enjoying this and... Yeah, maybe these longer conversations are more interesting. Uh, but yeah, anyway, have a great week and bye!